uh, let me ask you if you hear any difference in the sound. Do you hear any difference? Listen to it. So, all right. Can you hear better? All right. Good. We, uh, we've, the other day when my brother was preaching, I was sitting down here and I said, we got to do something. Either my ear, I need to have to have ear next, or we got to have a new mic. <laughs> so, but I found out there were several people a whole lot younger than me weren't here either, so I felt good about that. And, uh, <laughs> but anyway, we bought a new mic, so we're trying to get it worked, the bugs worked out of it, but uh, so far, I think it's going to help us. So, all right. Well, it's good to see all of you. Uh, Tim, tell us your friends. It's This is Don and Nancy Spiker. Don uh, and some Nancy dear friends Spiker. of ours. So yes. glad to have you all. Well, and uh, so good to see all of you here tonight. And, uh, well, the last few days have been very, very hectic in many, many ways. So, uh, and I appreciate your prayers for Stoneboro Youth Camp. We, uh, we had a real good youth camp. And uh, they were proud probably 700 or to 800 in the bigger services Friday night and Sunday morning. And uh, so big camp, a lot of pressure and a lot of responsibility to lay resting down on your shoulders. But God helped us in just a, an unusual way. And I thank you for good, good altar services. It's been encouraging to me this summer to hear several reports of youth camps just having a real good moving of God. And uh, that encourages me. It tells me God's trying to help us and do something special for us. So I'm very, very grateful. Thank you for your prayers. And we've had several things. Mike Geary had his leg amputated while we were gone. And uh, that's been a huge, big thing. Marvin Stamper had a biopsy. Not Stamper, Marvin Cooper had a biopsy today. And waiting results of that. And uh, Scott Loper wrecked his car. And, uh, we're waiting the results of that. <laughs> but seriously, I, I want us to pray for Scott and, and uh, his wife-to-be as they're facing the wedding here soon. They now have to look for a car and, and uh, the residents as well. And those things happen just uh, happen to me. And probably happen to all of us, you know. And, uh, so I'm glad Scott got this behind him because now that wreck stuff's behind him. He can just move on, but... Seriously, but uh, yeah, we're trusting the Lord, and uh, a lot of lot of things. The the uh, Albertsons made it back from South Dakota, and their grandbaby is healing, but still faces uh, some issues. Uh, what stitches taken out, pins taken out, or whatever. So, all right. So next Monday, there's still another round of hospital visits. So. We're glad you're here and glad the Lord is here. Let's bow our heads and invite the presence of the Lord. Father, we don't come casually tonight. We come with our hearts open and asking you to visit us and help us. Lord, we could just kind of casually go through this service and go through motions, but we don't want to do that. We want to focus our attention on, on you and on spiritual things, and, and, and we ask you to help us tonight. We're trusting you to make this service all that you want it to be for our good and your glory, and we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Rick, I'm going to let you lead it, but I kind of think we need to sing happy yes. birthday to a man turning 40. Don't you think? <laughs> He's barely in his 30s, and he turn 40 tomorrow, I think it is, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Tomorrow? All right, so Rick, lead us.
206. 206. Trusting the Lord. And, and I, I've just been thrilled to, to uh, visit with him and pray with him and him just pray right out to asking the Lord to keep him true and was doing that today. And uh, so let's pray for Mike and pray for Pat. Mike also has a lot ahead of him. Uh, we're going to rehab before long. I don't know exactly when, but uh, we want to remember uh, Mike and Pat both. And then we want to remember Marvin Cooper. Marvin had a biopsy today and won't know the results for a week or so. So let's remember Marvin and Cooper. And Joyce has not been feeling well as well, so we want to remember Joyce. Uh, let's continue to remember Josiah, uh, the uh, Albertson's grandson, and uh, all the issues with healing and so forth with him. We want to remember Chad Newton. Chad had a terrible accident, broke his pelvis, and uh, have been back in the hospital this week, I believe, and, and just really, really injured himself severely. So let's remember Chad and ask the Lord to touch him, give him a healing touch as we pray. Uh, let's remember Josh Stamper and Esther Beyer, both uh, Josh in his internship, and which is winding down, I think. Uh, is it through next Sunday? I'm I believe that might work Sunday after anyway. Uh, so let's remember Josh and uh, also remember Esther. Esther will still be in Honduras for a while, so let's remember her as we pray. And then I want us to also remember Rita's brother Rodney has been very, very sick 
and uh, she's been having trouble. Have you gotten a hold of him since you emailed or texted? Uh, when he gets real sick, sometimes he doesn't answer his phone. Of course, that that uh, worries really terribly. But uh, but let's remember, Rob has been very very sick uh, for a week or so, and uh, doesn't know if it's COVID, but he's got a terrible cough and uh, other symptoms. So let's remember. Rodney, as we pray, that he just needs a special touch from the Lord. I want us to also remember, and I was not kidding a while ago when I said Scott and the Redmonds are uh, vehicle shopping, and I know that that's a, that's a very common, ordinary thing, but it's a thing that we need direction on and leadership on, so we, I want us to pray and thank the Lord. Thank the Lord that they, none of them were hurt, seriously, and uh, very, very grateful. I tell you what, you uh, you have a have a, a trip or two where you see a wreck or experience a slowdown because of a terrible wreck or something, and you, you realize just how fortunate. And we drove home Sunday night after church last Sunday night and got home at two fifteen in the morning, and, and uh, by that time I was I told Virginia I'm I'm real glad it wasn't three o'clock getting home because I don't know if I made it to three o'clock. <laughs> Because I was just getting to the end. But, uh, but thank the Lord for his mercy and thank the Lord for his mercy in this accident. Yes. And all of us, we've got an awful lot to thank him for, don't we? Yes. Praise yes. God. All right, any other spoken requests you want to mention? Our grandson Caleb had surgery today on his broken foot, a right. plate and five screws. Oh my, oh my. Well, let's remember you said Caleb. Yes, Caleb. As we pray tonight and ask the Lord. I, I want us to also, and I, I just became aware of this when I came in, Lyle was mentioning to me he's had a weekend retreat for his uh, degree that he's working on. And uh, I know that that's a strenuous, strenuous thing. And I want us to pray for Lyle as he finishes this up and, and all that's involved. Some of you know exactly what he's going through. And uh, so I want us to pray God and give him a special touch. Maybe you have an unspoken burden by a praise hand that means we want to take to the Lord together. And we're pretty crowded in places tonight, so let's stand together as we pray. David, lead us. Let's lift our voices together. Join him as he leads us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house tonight. We thank you for your many blessings to us. Thank you. We go on and on and on. Oh, thank you for yes. all yes. the words thank that you for the grace thank you, that you Lord. bestowed upon each one of us standing here. The Lord. Lord, none of us are worthy to stand oh, in your presence bless you your say name. to come, and you will meet with us. And Lord, we welcome your presence to the service tonight. We thank you for being here already. We thank you for knowing who you are, yes. and for knowing yes. that you Amen. rule the universe. You not only rule Praise the universe, the you rule the world that we live in. And Lord, Praise we understand God. all that's going we on in the world you, around us, but we, we know that you're in control. Not only in the world, in the world, but you're in control of each yes. of our lives. Yes. And Lord, you know each of us more than we know ourselves. And Lord, we just pray that you would help yes. each of us to yes. draw closer to you and be lights oh, to those around right about you. Lord, we think about these requests tonight. Lord, we thank you for helping Dad and Mike through their amputation surgeries. Lord, it's a, it's a big adjustment for them, but we thank you for your grace and your help so far. We pray that you would continue to help uh, Mike and Pat as she's helping to take care of them. Lord, we pray for Marvin and this test result, or yes. you know the result yes. already. Yes. Yes. And Lord, whatever the result, we know that you're able to help through this. We pray that it'll be a good result that Amen. will be done. And give them the grace as they go through this. We pray, Lord, we pray for yes. um, Josiah yes. Albert. Yes. Thank you yes. for the yes. Lord, we pray that you would help him with extreme pain that he's been in. Lord, we pray that thank you for the relief he's gotten so far. Lord, we just pray that you would continue to touch him. Pray for Reese's brother, Rodney, and others that are burdened for her. Lord, we just pray that you would undertake your situation to help cross the mile during the Caleb went with the surgery and others that maybe weren't mentioned out loud, but for each one of these needs, you know that we're able to touch. Oh God, oh 
Yeah. We pray for Josh tonight. We pray that you would help him as he finishes up class. Uh, we can know of his internship. Thank you for your help so far, Lord, tonight as he speaks. Yes. Just be yes. with him. We pray for Esther as she's ministering in Honduras. Yes. Yes. Jeremy, we pray that you would be with him, Lord. Lord, we pray for Lyle's uh, finishing of his degree. Lord, we pray that you yes. help him that. Yes. Lord, we know yes. that you yes. are more than able to help him. We're beyond ourselves. Yes. Would you step in and help and give us, give him clarity of mind and then help us to finish his degree. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your help through this week so far. Lord, we just pray that you would be with us tonight. We pray for us. Stroud on his birthday. Yes. Help them as they prepare to go to the venue in the street camp. We pray that you would meet in the camp Amen. there. We pray for Carthage Camp tonight. We pray that you would be there. Amen. Well, again, Amen. Your many, many blessings to us. We thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your, your watch care over us. And we just pray that you would help each of us realize that serving you is the most important decision we can make. And the most important thing is to. Seek thy will and yes. the Father will for all that you do will give you praise in Jesus' name. Thank you, Ben, for leading us. I want us to sing a couple of courses, and I'm going to go back to page 55, which is uh, Unforgettable Old Time Favorites. This is the key of the edge. And uh, I thought of this course that just came to my mind. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. And I look through, and it's not the words are in there, so we'll, we'll try it. I hope it all comes to me, but uh, I'm glad he knows the way through every wilderness. I'm glad he does. Praise the Lord. Let's sing. My Lord knows the way through the
was till I started singing and having preaching hard to a big crowd. You extend your voice a little far. In fact, I hope you'll pray for me. I've got a pretty intense break next week, not this coming week. Sing it again. He brought me in from the fields of sin. He brought me in.
Wolf dressing. <laughs> All right, someone else wants to give God praise. Yes. I'm glad that God is always with us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sorry, I can't call their name. Scrolls. 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 All right. Our sister Scrolls. So let's pray that God will continue to help her. I, I knew Sister Alvin's name, but I couldn't remember her maiden name. So I couldn't remember her parents' name. So, but uh, after 52 years in one place, let's pray God will just fill in the, the, the gaps. Fill in the spots. Yes. Yes. say that about Rex and parents moving and sickness and lung problems and all. we might as well go through it with Jesus and stay true to him and keep true to him and let him give us grace and all he does over and over again I see him give us grace and I'm so grateful alright someone else wants to give God praise tonight yes sir the Go ahead. 
Context with what I what I shouted. Some of you weren't here Sunday, and I was telling a story about Carrie Lee with Sherilyn in the grocery store, and it was almost her birthday. And she was getting close to all of these people she didn't know. She was saying, "I can't believe it's almost my birthday!" Saying it real loud, <laughs> so people would hear that it was almost her birthday. And then she told Sherilyn, she said, "I'm doing that on purpose." You know? <laughs> She said, I'm fixing to do it again. <laughs> so anyway, we've had, uh, I've had some fun with that. I can't believe it's almost my birthday. So. Somebody suggested I should just walk up and down the aisles of Lowe's. Was it you, Pam? So I could say that, walk up and down the aisles of Lowe's. I can't believe it's almost my birthday. Who yeah. knows what, what I might get. All right, Psalm 86 for just a couple brief moments. Psalm 86. The game of comparisons is played so often, isn't it? Comparisons. I read where the son of a lawyer, a doctor, and a preacher were talking about how much money their fathers made. And the lawyer's son said, my father goes into a court a courtroom on a case and he comes home with as much as $1,500. And uh, the doctor said, my, said my, my father performs an operation and he, he earns as much as $2,000. And the minister's son, determined to, not, uh, to be, not be outdone, said, that's nothing. My father preaches for 15 minutes on Sunday morning. It takes four men to carry out all the money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the comparison game. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll carry on. I think it's it's natural and human to sometimes compare ourselves. The comparison game happened just last Saturday with some of our, our very own church teams at the car wash. Some of the boys were, were comparing, and maybe I should even say arguing, about which brand of truck was better, Chevy or Ford. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, people all the time compare things by observation and personal experience. Comparisons are common in many areas. Personalities, we compare personalities, how different personalities will respond in different circumstances. Employments, hobbies, vehicles, research, children. And as you observe and or experience these things, your, your comparisons naturally lead you to a conclusion. For instance, as those, those boys, you know, were arguing about whether it's Ford or Chevy. I see Noah smi smiling real big here. He's, he's a Ford man, and, and uh, let's see, Jacob's a Chevy man, and Nathan's a Ford man. And, you know, so they had this little discussion going on. But if you have a bad experience with a Chevy or a Ford, whichever one, you'll conclude you, you don't want the one that you had a bad experience with, right? 
experiences and comparisons leads to a conclusion. In the Old Testament, in Psalm 86, David participated in a comparison exercise that brought him to a definite conclusion. We find it in verse 8. I was just reading this recently and it caught my attention. In verse 8, you read two comparisons David does and two conclusions that he reaches. The first comparison and conclusion centered on the Lord. David says in verse 8, Among the gods, there is none like unto thee, O Lord. If you were to study the other gods in the Old Testament, you would find many that were worshipped. Baal, the god of the Canaanites. Chemosh, the god of the Moabites. There was Dagon, the, the god of the Philistines. Marduk, he was the god of the Babylonians, the Assyrians, and Persians. Uh, Milcom, he was the god of the Ammonites. Other variations of this god was Molech or Moloch. There was even the golden calf that was the God created by the Israelites. And David, David would have known the history of his people and their interactions with these false gods. David would have known the story of Aaron and how he, he melted down the people's gold and fashioned the calf for his ancestors to worship. David would have no doubt heard the story of Dagon, this this happens just a few chapters prior to David arriving, arriving on the scene. He would have heard that story how Dagon fell down before the Ark of the Covenant. David had observed these other gods. He had watched the children of Israel experience and experiment with other gods. But while he has done that, David had also experienced the true God for himself. He had experienced God on the battlefield. He had experienced God in the wilderness. He had experienced God on the throne while he was king. He had experienced God while he was on the run. David, as you read the Psalms, he's experienced God in many places, in many different times. And as he, as he no doubt reflects on all of those things... He writes in his memoir with brevity and clarity, Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord. It's almost like we see the choice in his voice. The comparison led to a conclusion, and the conclusion led to a choice. Spurgeon, speaking of the gods, what he calls the gods by the nomination of superstition. He says, but these are vanity itself and cannot be compared with the living and true God. Even if the heathen idols were gods, none of them in power or even in character could be likened unto the self-existent, all-creating God of Israel. He says, if every imaginary deity could start into actual existence and become really divine, yet we would still choose Jehovah to be our God and reject all others. If we were to place the gods of the 21st century on a piece of paper, we would have a long list. It wouldn't sound like Baal or Dagon. It would be a list filled with things we could readily recognize. All of us here tonight know that a God can be anything and anything can be worshipped. We see people all around us worshiping their money and relationships and jobs and possessions and positions. And if we were to, to dive deeper into those classifications, we would have another lengthy list of specific things that people worship. And as we observe and or experience that these other gods that, that people worship don't bring contentment, joy, or peace... And as we observe and experience that the true God gives purpose and meaning and fulfillment like no other God, we can conclude with David, among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord. Isaiah 40 is a great place to go to consider that subject. Isaiah says, to whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness will you compare unto him? 
Later in the chapter, the Lord asks the question, To whom then will ye liken me? As you read the chapter, you quickly find what David has found, that there is no God compared to our God. Friend, I don't know the gods that you may be chasing, the gods that may be clamoring for your attention, but I want you to know there is no God Amen. like the true God, Jehovah. The second thing that David compares is the works of the Lord. As David makes this comparison between the works of the other gods and the works of the true God, if I'm any judge, it doesn't take long for David to reach a conclusion. I mean, really, what, what had the other gods done that David could remember or recite? If we've divided that up on a couple columns on a legal pad, there, there wouldn't be anything in that column on the legal pad. In fact, Spurgeon asked the following questions. What have the false gods ever made or unmade? What miracles have they wrought? When did they divide a sea or march through a wilderness scattering bread from the skies? If we're looking at comparisons, there's not much on the side of the false gods. Oh, but... On the side of the true God, the works are without number. I think all of us would probably agree that David was an emotional guy, wouldn't we? You can't read the Psalms without picking up on perhaps the what we would call the emotional roller coaster that he sometimes is on. But we can almost imagine as, as David is pinning verse number eight and he gets to the second half of that verse, we can almost imagine David having one of his spiritual highs as he reflects on all the works that God has done. Leading the children of Israel to Egypt during the famine, preparing the way by sending Joseph, delivering them from Egyptian bondage, the Red Sea parting, the walls of Jericho coming down, the sun standing still, the axe head floating, floating, Gideon, the victory over the Midianites with lanterns and trumpets, the victory brought about by hornets, manna in the wilderness, the killing of the giant. As David writes his memoir, he could recount many of these works that God had done. And as David reflects on all this, he declares in the remainder of verse 8, Neither are there any works like unto thy works. David knew. David knew from experience, by observation, that God's works were like no others. We were to stop this evening and consider the works the gods of this world have done for you and me. We find no comparison with what God's done for us. Maybe we ought to have a little exercise. An exercise that you do in your own time when you go home. You ought to pause and put the list together. And be reminded once again of how great and marvelous God's works toward you. No works like any other. Spurgeon's conclusion should be ours. He says, O Jehovah, in thy person and in thy works... Thou art as far above all gods as the heavens are above the nethermost of this. And while David's gone through the exercise, and maybe we've gone through the exercise, there's really no comparison. The scripture says, comparing ourselves among ourselves is unwise. And certainly it is, as we try to compare our abilities and our personalities those things, compare our spiritual experiences by someone else's, can be unwise. But go ahead and compare God's. Go ahead, compare the works of God, and you'll find that there is none like our God. There are no works like His works. I want us to close by singing chorus number 96 of your chorus book. There's no God compared to thee, O God. No, not one. No, not one. Chorus number 96, the key of that. Let's see this together. There's no God compared to the old God.
together. Father, we thank you that there is no God compared to you. You are King of kings, you are Lord of lords, you are God of all gods. We thank you that we're serving you tonight. Thank you for all that you've done for us and all you're doing in us and all you're doing through us. Bless us now as we go our separate ways. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed. God bless you.